It is 6.30. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, good evening. Is there anyone here for public input? For a public input? Yeah, no, just somebody that. Oh, is there anyone here for public input? And that would include the person on Zoom. What did they say? Person on Zoom? Yeah, we can hear you. I heard him. They didn't ping him. Oh, there's Don't no, know. no one here for public input? Review and approve council agenda as amended. Move to approve. Is it amended or as presented? Since yeah, it's on here now. So earlier or later this afternoon, I did. Uh, they know that. Oh, oh, oh sorry. So yeah. I added the item about. So yeah, Antoine. for Antoine. So I would say as presented. Presented? Yeah, presented. Yeah. All right. As presented. I'll second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed unanimously. Item five, consent agenda. Item A, approve uh, A4 LLC tobacco license. Item B, approve additional animal license. Item C, approve resolution regarding accepting donations to the city. Item D, approve service agreement with John Hammond. Item E, approve temporary gambling application for the Church of St. Joseph. Item F, approve job description for police cadet. Item G, approve consent agenda appointment of Anthony Nova, Nohava to position of police cadet. Item H, approve job posting eligibility list for CSO. Item I, approve sar police sergeant appointments. And item J, approve Friends Bar 2 a.m. liquor license renewal. Move to approve. Uh, I would like to pull I. And I'll move to approve all of them but I. I'll second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed unanimously. Mike? Um, I just have some questions on this. We we did talk about hiring that fourth one, but at the same time, we did talk about not putting a fourth sergeant on at this time. Um, from what I understand, we're going to be almost 10 officers short by the end of the summer. And you're going to have four sergeants, um, one of which you want to appoint to a daytime sergeant, um, from what I'm understanding here. Um, I think we're getting kind of top-heavy. I think we better uh, start thinking about coming up with a program and hoping the chief can come up with a program that's going to start replacing these officers. We're 10 going to be 10 short yeah. out of 23 positions. And you want, you're going to have five supervisors. If you go with this, you're going to have investigator at six and maybe six patrol officers total. I, I have my reasons for saying yes to this and I can tell you them. Um, one being when we're short, I'm hoping is the ideal time for Tony to get these people trained in to be in sergeants and them duties that are involved with that before they're loaded with a bunch of rookies. We <laughs> Second, you know, Tony's a new chief, and even if he wasn't new to being a chief, he's new here. And this is when I give Tony some rope to make the decisions he thinks he needs to do. I think and I'm you, not, and I, think, I don't I know think what it is on the outside, a little bit. that is why, and I'll still say yes. I think you gotta think about this a little bit. Um, you know, we're blaming everything on pay, which is not true. Um, you want more sergeants. Yes, I agree, they need to have some training but you're not gonna get eight or 10 people come in in one big jump. 
these people will probably be coming in one or two at, the, at one time, maybe. Um, you're going to have three sergeants, one of which is already trained. He can be an FTO. Um, sergeants don't have to. You can assign an FTO. Um, that's the way it was done in the past. And most departments use FTOs for training their officers. Um, you know, the fourth one can come in at a later date, yes, when you get your department back up in numbers. This city is going to be short. And you're going to have all super. We are now. Yeah, we are. Right. Yes. And we got to think of and a way. We have to think of a way. And you guys got to open your minds a little bit to maybe help them to get people to come to this town. Like I said, it isn't just pay that is not keeping people from this right at this moment. I think Tony should come up with a plan as to how we can, and it's going to take a, one hell of a long time to fill 10 positions. When St. Cloud, Minneapolis, St. Paul, all the large ones are hundreds of them down. Right. And we're 10. But we don't need to have four sergeants at this moment. I mean, if he wants to promote two of them back in to, to get up to his number, I think it would be fine. But everything wants to be top heavy in this town. Everybody's got to have X amount of supervisors. It, it, it's for four or five people. And I know it's going to be tough, but we're just short, plain and simple. Um, and yes, PD is one of them that do need some supervision, but having four sergeants, like I said, I'd, I'd, I'd be in favor of, of going with two of them at this time, and at a later date, as things start to fill up, yes, we can promote that fourth one. Um, but, but the thing is, is having the fourth, now we have supervision pretty much every day for almost around almost, the clock. Almost around the clock. I and to me, that, that, well... That's important. <clears throat> I wouldn't say that. Can I, I, I don't see a plan staffing? that shows me he's going to have supervisory 24-7. And, and it won't be. He did go through that last work session. Not much. I, yeah, I, I, I thought I'd try to explain that pretty well. Is uh, Part of asking for the four sergeants is Traditionally, we have filled sergeant slots after we're fully staffed. And over the 10 years of me being here, we've never been fully staffed ever. We're always short of somebody. Yep. And that means we always don't have enough of the supervision. So after watching it not work for 10 years, I'm trying to change He's that. He's going to try to change and do something different. And try something different. It might work, it might not work. I think it will because the supervisors are still able to do the line level jobs which means we're not losing anything on the road. We're, we're going to have... Sergeants our, our respond just there. as a police officer. And in the end of the day, if all four are in role, it does give them an opportunity to get their feet under them for their jobs now before we have a bunch of new people. When That way they have more time to focus on helping train those new people, and they're not now also trying to learn being a new sergeant all at the same time. All right, anything else on item I? Move to approve. I'll second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Four to one. All right, regular agenda, agenda item, right away ordinance. Let's see, who wants that? John? Uh, no, John. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was not my answer. Uh, I'll start off and I'll probably hand it over to Adri simply because um, Adri's done uh, a lot of the work along with, um, well, Brian, I guess, is the one that, uh, Brian Grogan with, um, I don't, I'm trying to remember what they're, Moss and Barnett. Mar yeah, Moss and Barnett, who does a lot of our um, franchise stuff. 
what we're looking at doing is just updating our right-of-way ordinance. Um, it hasn't been updated for quite some time. Um, if you recall, we do um, that a lot of the times we have franchise agreements um, with a lot of our utilities that come in, for example, like a charter, um, Stearns Electric, um, Excel Energy. Um, but the one area that it doesn't really cover very well um, are those like with fiber and things like that. And so our ordinance, probably because of the time that it was written, fiber wasn't ever really even considered. So what this ordinance does is it really just updates um, those kinds of things to allow us to be able to make sure that when work is being done in our right-of-ways, that um, those companies are restoring it back to the way it was. And that's essentially what this ordinance is really trying to accomplish. And so what you have before you is essentially two. Um, and it's the Ordinance 33, which is the right-of-way, and then Ordinance 33A, which is public property and the improvements, which talks about that. So um, we have um, sent all of this information out to the utilities because while it does, it, it's really trying to update some of those, it does have impact for anybody doing work in the right-of-way, and it's really essentially trying to make sure that it accomplishes all of the same things that I mentioned about making sure that it's restored the way it needs to be. Um, and I know we have also had that with the uh, discussions with the uh, company that's looking at next year coming in and providing fiber, um, and none of them have really had any concerns because these um, ordinance amendments are really... Um, getting us in line with a lot of the other cities, and so there's consistency within what we're what we're trying to accomplish. So I, I can look at Adria, I can look at Dave if they have anything else to add. They've both been involved a little bit in this process. Um, but I really don't have anything to add. Um, the company that we have been working with, they did make the comment last week that when we met with them that um, our proposed ordinance is very similar to what they've been seeing in like the city of St. Cloud. They just started work there last week and are hoping that everything here they'll continue bringing the fiber from St. Cloud then into Wade Park next year. So we really wanted to get this in place somewhat as soon as possible so that we can get all the administrative work done this winter with them and that they can start put getting <coughs> the stuff on poles and in the ground next year. So they they were completely fine with the process that we had in place within this proposed ordinance and didn't see any issues with it. All right, Council, any other questions? Just comments? a couple of quick ones. Um, kind of reading through it, and they're not going to allow replacement of poles over 50 feet. Is that correct? I believe so. Um, the reason I ask that is because if you go along 2nd Avenue, those poles are a lot taller than 50 feet if they ever have to be replaced a lot of according to this ordinance they can't replace a them. lot of that is through XL though and XL still has I think the ultimate say in that because those are mostly their poles it would only be the, the fiber optic companies poles that you're talking about mm -hmm. on these yeah. mm -hmm. they never put a 50 footer up and if they did they'd use XL's and the fiber company is getting authorization from Excel to go on Excel's poles. Yeah, to co so yeah. They're not putting up any poles. They're going on only existing poles. And a lot of this will be done overhead. There are some areas mm -hmm. where it will be underground. Well, well. Kind of the way it was written, it was if there was ever a replacement, they could not replace over 50 feet. So yeah. just as a little clarity, I don't know. Um, I well, apparently we don't have much jurisdiction over Excel's polls. Well, we do in the this language, ordinance. Right, but the language that we have in here is pretty standard, so I think that's very common that that's not being allowed in other places as well. Unless the yeah. city has some reason why we'd want to do that. I don't really see the reason to want to make any recommendations against that. Nobody's brought that up as an issue or a concern to us with all the well, utilities. I'm just familiar being with how this stuff works. <laughs> right, but I, I mean, Kinda. we did reach, we did send all of this information out to all of the utilities, um, mm -hmm. so all of them have, have been aware of what we're putting together and, and proposed, so none of those came back to us as any concerns with I, what was being proposed. Yeah, I haven't received any comments from any of the utilities. And then, companies. as far as the repair, there, there there's some does the city go out and inspect the repair or the um, store? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing we want to really make sure is yeah, is great. that that that's being done. Well, I was just reading about the blacktop, especially that yes. they want it extended more than so many yeah. feet each way. 
so that it fills properly yeah. and, and yep. steps. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're going to inspect that mm -hmm. to make sure it's done that way. Yep. Yes. Okay. All right. Anything else? Anybody want to move to approve uh, move Ordinance to approve. 33 right away in summary publication? Move to approve the right away. Second. All second. Ordinance 33 second. in summary publication. Is there uh, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed unanimously, and I need a uh, motion to approve 33A public property and improvements and summary publication. Move to approve. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed unanimously. You want to move to approve the bills? I have one question on the bills, okay. and it's a bill that, for bill, I'm sure. It's oh. for Erickson Electric. And it says low temp indicator light, and I think it said in the warming house. I don't, I can look into the, I can ask him, but I don't know that off the top so of my head. So I was kind of curious as to what, what it was, what it yeah. is, yeah. Low it was for, it was for $4,884.92. Jim's not here either. Mm. I don't know, yeah, what, in the warming house. I don't know, I can't tell you yeah. without looking at What was at it called? A low temperature indicator light that was installed for five grand. Okay. A little under, $5. but yes. I say the warming house has got an electric heater in there. <laughs> uh, unless it's a warming house, unless it's something oh. to do with the waterworks or water plant. When I have something. an opportunity to to talk to Bill, um, I'll find out and I'll just send you guys an email. Carla, yes, might know please. Too. Carla, may, well, Jesse would be the other one to know. Yeah. Jesse's the one that writes those descriptions yeah. up for that, so. Okay. I can, I'm more than if curious. If I can figure it out, I will, because I can have what a phone invoice. Otherwise, I, I'll have to ask Bill directly. What? Or or actually, I could probably ask Zach or um, on Whatever, that which yeah. way you Dale, Dale might and, know. Yeah, too. one of those two would know. Dale's on vacation. And he's With that, Dale's I'll, back. You back? Yeah. I'll move to pay the bills. I'll second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Passed unanimously. I have a letter here from Junior Achievement, and what they're doing is thanking us for our continued support of Junior Achievement for the money that we gave them from this? charitable yes. gambling. I got, it. I got it. That's all I got. Donna, you have yeah, I just one thing that didn't get in um, the update that is that we are um, going to be having a uh, joint cities meeting. It is the fifth Tuesday, um, which is August 29th. It'll be at in Sock Rapids. I believe they're doing it at their clearing. Yeah. It'll start at um, 5:30. I don't know exactly. I know they're gonna. Uh, the granite tables is one of the things that'll be on the agenda, and I'm not sure what the other one is. The what one? The granite table discussion. Oh, the, granite the whole table. group okay, wants okay, to. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I just missed. Maybe that. that's a better place for it. Um, as a discussion, so we can all hear what everybody's wanting to do with that particular thing. And when's our next council meeting? Is it going to be August seventh? All right. Anything else? Not. Dave, do you have anything? John? No, sir. Chief? No, sir. Avery? Paul? No, sir. All right, and we are adjourned at 648.